Okay, welcome. Great to see you all here. This is the Save Money and Be Resilient uh, Southern Illinois Sustainable Business Webinar Series presented by the Illinois Green Business Association. And our Cassie Carroll today is gonna be here um, to give us a lot of great information about their organization and uh, ways that they can help you and your business and your clients and everybody else um, to really keep track of, of things and, and get rewarded. You know, we all like to get rewarded um, for, for good practices and things like that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to these presentations over the coming four weeks. There are um, three more presentations the next uh, three Thursdays of February. So the 3rd, the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th. And you should be able to use the link that you had um, today to get into all of those. So, but, but I will send another um, reminder um, in front of the next ones. So um, I'm Amy McMorrow Hunter. I think I know everybody. So <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about introducing myself and I'm uh, with the Climate Economy Education Inc. And um, we are doing this in partnership with the Illinois Green Business Association. I'm really happy to be moving forward with them on this today. So I'm going to place some information in the chat. Um, they're just, uh, just you know, uh, technical things. Um, please, you know, turn off your microphone and you can leave your, your video on. You're welcome to do that. And if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Um, also, I'm, there's a couple events coming up I wanted to let everybody know about. Uh, there's this Saturday, there's the Carbondale Neighborhood Alliance meeting. And then on Tuesday, the 8th, I think it's Tuesday, the 8th, I know it's the 8th, um, there's a town hall meeting for the right to self-generate electricity. So we have this new CJ law and there's this right to self-generate term in there. And so we're going to look at how um, people in cooperatives and municipality um, areas will be able to benefit from this new law and hopefully they will be able to benefit from it. So with that, I am going to pass it over to Cassie. Awesome, well, thank you so much, Amy, for having me and thank you for partnering on this webinar series with um, the Illinois Green Business Association. And uh, thank you all for being here on, a, on an icy, snowy, cold day. <laughs> nice day to sit back and talk sustainability. Um, so as Amy said, uh, my name is Cassie Carroll. I am the director of the Illinois Green Business Program, along with my colleague, Anthony Santarelli, who is also on uh, our meeting today. And uh, I am also a program manager at the Smart Energy Design Assistance Center, or CDAC, at the University of Illinois. And I run a network of green business uh, programs across the country, which is the picture on the right there. Um, so we're really in good company here in Illinois uh, with a lot of leaders across the country that are all helping sustainability or businesses to be more sustainable. So the Illinois Green Business Program um, is an Illinois-based nonprofit. It was founded in 2008. And really our mission is to make it easier for businesses um, and organizations to go green. So we not only try to bring that national expertise that, um, and, and that good special sauce that all these other programs are using across the country, but we really try to work with our businesses to connect them to available incentives, programs, and opportunities that help a business not only be more sustainable, but reduce costs and be recognized um, for their environmental efforts. So, you know, really our, our drive is sustainable business um, as a standard practice. And we actually have a partnership with the Smart Energy Design Assistance Center at the University of Illinois so uh, to form the Illinois Green Business Program. So uh, a green business program, just really briefly, um, and then we'll talk about it a little bit later in our session today. Um, but really, um, a program, a green business program is a way to help businesses um, connect to all of those great resources and ways to reduce um, environmental impact. And it's uh, we have a team of sustainability specialists that help uh, our businesses achieve higher environmental performance and efficiency. So really we're bringing those resources together for businesses to find out about all the great things they can take advantage of to reduce resource use and money. Um, we provide a merit-based program and framework to help um, not only credibly uh, help businesses market and promote uh, their sustainability efforts, but also get recognized in their community. 
And really, ultimately, we're helping our businesses reach their environmental goals and helping consumers connect to those, uh, those opportunities. So what we'll go through today in the webinar, this is we'll, for the first webinar of uh, a four-part series. So we'll host these every Thursday at 10 a.m. through February, spreading the sustainability love. Um, but today, we're just going to focus on what is sustainability in business and what are some things that you can start um, taking advantage of in your organization now. So um, we'll talk about what business means or what sustainability means to business. Um, we'll talk about some key trends and benefits um, for sustainability in organizations. And then we'll start talking about ways to continue your sustainability journey. Now, this is just the intro to um, some in more in-depth webinars in the coming weeks on specific topics like energy, water, waste, and even ultimately ending with how you can get recognized for your efforts with the Illinois Green Business uh, Program. So we will definitely leave time for Q&A today. Please put your questions in the chat. Um, I'd like to first ask you all, um, uh, you know, why, why were you interested in joining this uh, webinar today? Um, if you can pop that in the chat as I'm, I'm introducing uh, our first few slides here today, um, that'll be helpful for, for me to understand and, and comment on as we move forward. So if you could just pop in the chat why you joined today, that would be awesome. So let's dig into um, sustainability. Um, we've all seen this, uh, you know, or many of us have seen this uh, graphic on the right here, um, but really I just wanted to set the stage. Um, sustainability is a catch-all a catch -all term. It's a lot of different things and it means a lot of different things to different people. Um, but really, the core of sustainability is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And so we usually talk about it in environment, society, and economy, or people, planet, profit. Um, so really, it's all of these pieces coming together to make sure that we have the resources um, as we move forward and as future generations uh, are, are in our world. So really, um, sustainability could mean that you are focusing on the environment, which is what we're going to talk a lot about today. But then social and economic pieces are so tied into there. And you'll see as we talk more about sustainability in business, how important it is to not only look at how your business impacts uh, the community or your customers, or how you can you know, align your environmental initiatives to be more profitable. Um, but really during this webinar series, we're gonna focus on a lot on environmental sustainability. I'll touch on the other key pieces, um, but really gonna focus on those in our session today. And thanks, I see some people in the chat um, talking about why they're here today. Thank you for adding those um, pieces. So sustainability in business, um, what does it mean? And it Really, sustainability refers to doing business without negatively impacting the environment, community, or society as a whole. Um, so it's really thinking about how you operate as business, the services that you provide, how is that um, impacting the environment, your local community, or whatever community footprint you have as an organization, or society as a whole. Really, um, sustain business, uh, businesses have an opportunity to help drive and lead uh, sustainable practices in our communities um, and with uh, their staff, and also ex ex examine and lead within their own business community on how you can run a more efficient business. But ultimately, sustainability in business is a shared value opportunity. So not only is it the warm, fuzzy, I'm saving energy and reducing waste and you know those common terms that we hear around environmental sustainability, it's an opportunity to also increase your profitability and overall health of your company. So a lot of uh, sustainability in business is a shared value opportunity. Um, so really doing good can have a direct impact on your company's avail ability to do well. And some of the major corporations you see taking on sustainability, that's the reason why they're doing it because they not only can be more efficient in their operations or produce things with less resources or have lower waste bills because they're repurposing or reusing materials, but it helps strengthen the company and for generations to come. 
So investors are perking up and saying, this is the way business should be done. Um, corporations are driving this throughout their supply chains. Um, so they see this shared value opportunity um, and are taking advantage of it. And small businesses can too. So really, you know, what we're going to talk about today is where can you start? And, and you know, the answer is anywhere. Start somewhere. And, you know, as we go through today, I want you to think about how sustainability might fit into your organization or your operations or what you do um, as we move forward. But I want to also touch on what else is driving business sustainability. What are we seeing in the market right now? Um, you know, 90% of the largest companies in the world are publishing sustainability reports. And the term ESG or environmental society and governance um, is a key term that we're hearing a lot of. And there's uh, these, this graphic here shows the different components of ESG. You know, if when we're talking about the environment, you know, things like waste management, natural resources, climate, those are all components of the environmental pie. But then companies are also looking at things like risk management for their governance. Sustainability can also manage, help manage risk and reduce risk. And then society is a piece of it. So when we, you know, talked about that three, um, three circle graph in the earlier stage, companies are putting that into practice through ESG. And social looks at society, human, manage, human, human capital management, um, equity is a big piece of that social pie. They all fit together to do uh, environmental, um, social and governance activities. And corporations are really harnessing the power of this pie um, to, to, to solidify their companies for, for the future and beyond. Um, corporations are also really addressing their supply chain sustainability. So um, an organization, as you so, um, it's a nonprofit that works with corporations across um, the country, major corporations like Amazon, um, Walmart, et cetera. Um, they are seeing that companies are taking on a net zero plan. So by the end of the year, they are building net zero plans. And net zero means net zero waste, net zero energy use. Um, and they're really looking at their supply chain and saying, well, how can we help our, our you know, uh, manufacturers in other countries reduce their footprint? So they are really concerned about their footprint and are making commitments to reduce that footprint. So as these, as these corporations build their net zero plans, they have 5% uh, reduction goals in their um, climate footprint every year um, until 2050. So corporations are getting really aggressive around this and small businesses can do similar things and support um, products and, and different things that are coming out of these corporations um, to enhance or reduce their own carbon footprint, which is neat. Also, can we see carbon accounting and climate baselining becoming more prevalent? So what that means is companies are taking a look at where is my biggest car climate impact and I'm going to put my attention on that. So we'll, I'll give you an example a little bit later in our presentation, but um, looking at your climate impact and addressing specific measures or areas of your climate impact is becoming a big trend across the country, not only in big businesses, but in small businesses too. And it's things that we can all do um, to reduce our footprint. Also, um, you know, sustainability improves that financial performance. So doing all of these things that I just mentioned also helps consumers really connect to your company and um, really helps consumers drive, uh, you know, your, your purchasing um, and really helps improve that financial performance, not only reducing energy costs, but the consumer piece and consumers that are eco-friendly and support sustainable businesses will frequent businesses more. So. Um, really, it's a it's a holistic pie as you're seeing, and environmental goals are also starting to intersect with equity. So, you know, you'll see in a couple of slides how that correlates. But again, consumers are also driving the train. Um, the Shelton Group, which is a marketing firm that looks at major corporations, um, you know, uh, did a study recently on the consumer trends in sustainability. And they found that 42% of consumers want to be seen as someone who buys eco-friendly products. So there are, they are, the consumers are really the key driving piece, those eco-friendly um, and um, people who are concerned about the sustainability of our environment and our, our newer generations are really driving this train. They want, the consumers want you to demonstrate real impact, not just surface commitments. And the new workforce really is looking to work for companies 
that are uh, have a sustainability mission, that are um, looking at equity within their business, that are taking steps to reduce environmental impact. So sustainability not only helps drive more consumers to your company, but it can also help retain and attract uh, this new and incoming talent. The Shelton Group also did a really interesting study about what makes a good company. And they did this research based on um, US climate census data and tried to mirror different um, sorts of populations in this study. But these are the key pieces. So what makes a good company to, um, you know, the, the American citizen is, or the um, Americans in America is making a real commitment to climate change, recycles or produces recyclable items, uh, works to reduce waste, carries US made or eco-friendly products, and treats its employees well. So these were the top themes of what makes a good company. And honestly, this treats its employees well trumped all these things around sustainability. So making sure you treat your staff well and your customers will see that. They'll see that you're treating your staff well. They know some of your staff. Um, that's a huge driver. But what I also found to be really interesting is the, the waste and recyclability piece continues to be prevalent. More than any other issue, consumers are still concerned about the plastic in the ocean than any other environmental issue, such as climate change, plastic waste, or air pollution. So businesses, if you, if you can align with some of these key trends and things that consumers really care about, they're gonna frequent your business more. And really communicating what you're doing in that impact is key to really making that connection with your customer base and your community how you're um, really driving sustainability in your business and, and making these real commitments to climate change. That's going to help your business have a competitive advantage over some of the other companies that are in your industry and in your region or area. So these are some key trends. And really, ultimately, um, what we're seeing is that you know sustainable business is the new standard of business. Whether you look at corporate um, companies that are doing this, um, it's really becoming integrated um, into how we do business today, not only from operations, but our consumers are demanding it, our um, incoming workforce is demanding it, and um, there's some really great opportunities to put, um, to use sustainability as a way to put a stronghold and a foot down and plant roots for the generations to come. So how do you align your business with sustainability? Um, so green business, just to recap, you know, um, saves money by wasting less. They create cleaner and healthier places to live and work. The cool thing is, and we've seen this in so many companies, is if you are promoting sustainable practices in your business, your employees are going to take that home with them. Um, so you're helping your community engage in more sustainable, environmentally sustainable practices. And then, of course, um, our businesses are always on a journey of uh, continuous improvement. And these are some of the businesses that we've worked with. Um, for example, um, uh, you know, Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits is a huge, you know, distribution company throughout um, Illinois. But they did at their corporate headquarters just even a printing management program where they um, put a, um, a lock on a printer. So if you sent a document to the printer, it wouldn't print unless you got to the printer and put in your code. The document would then print. Well, they saved 35% um, uh, on their paper costs and reduced paper so much just by even having this system at the printer so that documents just wouldn't print and unnecessary printing wouldn't happen. Um, so that's even one small way that a big company like that reduced their impact. They also um, added recycling bins next to each garbage bin and increased their diversion rate from about 20% to about 45%. And they're continuing to work on that diversion rate in their company. So if you think about a headquarters, I think they have about 1,200 employees. That's a huge impact. But small businesses like Rogards, for example, which is an office supply company here in the Champaign-Urbana area, they did a total lighting upgrade with the Ameren Illinois Energy Efficiency Program, um, and they were able to reduce their utility bills by about 20%. So these are things that all businesses can do, but then their consumers, their staff, their employees can, uh, can receive the benefits. They can get engaged and involved and really help the business towards, uh, or those businesses or their organizations towards continuous improvement. Some other examples of things that green businesses do, um, just wanted to mention the use of environmentally friendly cleaners. 
um, really, you know, environmentally friendly cleaners like uh, EPA Safer Choice cleaners or, uh, you know, Green Seal certified cleaners improve indoor air quality. So there's a lot of really great guidance from those two organizations about how cleaners that are recognized in their programs, even cleaners with um, disinfectants uh, for, for COVID mitigation, um, you can reduce the harmful chemicals and that, you know, when you spray a cleaner, you smell something. Well, that smell might not always be good for our bodies and for our health and for our lungs, but having these, uh, using an environmentally friendly cleaner can reduce that impact for your staff and your customers too. Another really great thing that I wanted to talk about with LED lighting is the security piece. So you can kind of see this before and after LED picture with um, in a warehouse. Um, it increased the amount of light, it made the room brighter, and that that also increases the safety of workers. Workers can see things more. They can, they are able to move around easier. They're able to be, have things be more visible in the warehouse space. Um, even colleges, community colleges, for example, in Illinois have been doing more parking light, lot retrofits, not just for the cost savings, but because it helps make their students feel safer on campus. So all of these pieces fit together, um, but there's, there's benefits to sustainability outside of just the cost savings and environmental reductions. It can really help make a safer, more secure environment for the people who work and frequent um, your organizations or your buildings. Um, so, you know, the list can go on and on of different practices. We'll touch on some more today, but really the question is that you want to start with is what are you wasting? You know, whether it be energy, whether it be supplies that you use that you're throwing out frequently, um, you know, and how can you reduce that waste? So there's a couple different ways that we help companies kind of get started. And, you know, one thing that we recommend is just starting to think about what does it mean to be a green business for your company? And we use green business to denote the environmental sustainability part of this sustainability pie. You know, how does it align with your mission or values? How does it interface with your, your operations? And a really great way that you exercise that you could take to do that is like establishing a green mission. So for example, this auto body shop, um, this is their mission, you know, offer honest and reliable automotive service and repair uh, and to develop an unmatched reputation with our customers and within the community in terms of service and quality. So how does envir the environment piece fit in there? Um, you know, they, they talk a lot about honest and reliable, unmatched reputation, and service and quality. So I took a stab at, you know, creating a green mission for this company that I just found online. Um, they could say something like to provide an, our service while leading the way for environmentally friendly auto repair for our customers, staff, and community. So that could be a commitment that they could make that aligns with their mission, the core of what they do. We've seen the most success with businesses that align um, sustainability or environment with their mission in terms of continuing their practices moving forward and making that communication between their customers and staff. If, if people see how sustainability aligns with your mission and what you do, it's going to help make it easier for you to continue to think about how you can reduce your resource use and impact moving forward. It bakes it into the pie, so to speak, um, for your company. We also recommend that businesses um, get started by just baselining your resource use. So I talked about how businesses are looking at their climate footprint um, to really drive their um, practices that they're implementing or their, their different sorts of measures that they could take on to reduce impact. Well, this is a business, um, a carbon footprint that we use. Um, the nearest location, I just chose Springfield um, for their data and a grocery store. So they have one facility, 35 employees, 20,000 square feet of facilities. You can kind of see where um, they have the biggest footprint and it's in electricity. Um, they also have a footprint in waste and they're commuting. So to and from uh, the, you know, the grocery store for their employees and staff, but also commuting in the sense of bringing products to their store. Um, so I would say for this business, this carbon, quick carbon footprint estimate, we want to focus on electricity. So things like your you know, heating and cooling systems, obviously refrigeration, lighting, that is going to make the biggest impact in this business's uh, uh, carbon footprint, but then also in reducing those costs. So if you don't know how much you're using or where those opportunities lie, how do you know 
where to start. So really we tell a lot of organizations really baseline your energy and resource use. And our organization can certainly help organizations or businesses do that. Also, once you get that baseline, you wanna craft those strategies to reduce the resource use. You wanna track and be able to actually track impact over time. And then once you set up those systems and those strategies, you can start implementing. And then that's the thing, you can evaluate where you're at, um, what, how did it work? Are you seeing savings? And then move forward with uh, initiatives or, or tweak them and take a different direction. So, you know, I wanna say before we get into all of these, because now I'm gonna be talking about some of the opportunities that businesses have to go green. Um, you don't have to do everything at once. It feels overwhelming to look at so many different parts of your business, but even just starting um, this with say energy and focusing on energy and starting to select one or two strategies, that's a great thing to do. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can get started, but you know, just starting with one piece of the pie is, is great. So obviously um, uh, every business should understand their baseline and resource use. So get a free energy assessment. Larry from uh, Ameren, Illinois is on our call today. They offer no cost energy assessments for organizations. Um, he is an energy advisor in your region. He can help connect you. He can talk to you about the programs. He can talk to you about what's going on in your building or your business or organization, and he can get you connected there. But there are really a lot of great opportunities for small businesses um, to get um, increased enhanced incentives for equipment and labor to do like projects like lighting projects or retrofit projects to LEDs. So take advantage of that. Plus, as a rate payer, you pay into these programs. So that money is just sitting there waiting for you to take advantage of through to reduce your energy use. But get an energy assessment, see where you're at, um, and then really and work with Amer in Illinois to help get that done. Also, performing a waste audit is a neat thing. You know, we, I, I was in a business and saw they had a recycling bin and a trash bin in their copier room. I said, why do you have a trash bin in the copier room? I said, well, just you know, just in case we're putting a recycling bin and a garbage bin next to each other. I said, well, look at, look at what's in the garbage bin. It's all paper. <laughs> you know, you have a recycling bin there to capture that paper. Let's take the trash out. Let's put some signage on that recycling bin and increase how much uh, paper is going in the recycling bin. So that's a great idea. Um, so without doing a waste assessment and seeing how many recyclables are going into the trash or even could I recycle? What percentage of my trash is recycling? Um, you know, you, you won't be able to tell whether what opportunities you have to reduce waste. So that's just one example of why waste audit's a great idea. It's also good to check in if you do have a recycling system and see how it's performing. Is there better signage that's needed? What are some common things that are getting thrown in the trash? Those are things that you can send out to your staff or make your consumers aware that these items need to be diverted. And it's little tweaks like that that can help increase your diversion rates in your business and help things stay out of the landfill that should that could be recycled. So waste thought is a great idea. Um, also, understanding your water use. So being able to read your water bill is so important. It sounds so basic, but tracking your water use and reading it can really help you identify leaks or spikes in your, in your water use. And then it can also help you identify easy ways to reduce water use. So um, things like looking at your flow rates of your toilets or faucets, um, doing that water use assessment. And we have a great template that you can use and, and we can also help. Um, but that's a great place to find some water saving opportunities. And remember, water savings sometimes equates into energy savings too, especially when you're using hot water. So things like in this picture here, this pre rent spray valve that's in a restaurant, that um, can reduce not only water use and make your water more efficient or use more efficient, but it reduces your water heating costs because you're not using as much hot water. So um, opportunities like that can be found in understanding your water use. Purchasing habits, you know, we can take a look and see uh, what reusable or recyclable items you could substitute with uh, things that you purchase now. And then, of course, as I highlighted before, benchmarking your car carbon emissions can really help you show um, to show you where your focus should lie to reduce not only climate impacts, but cost as well. So I'm going to go into a few tips and tricks and things that we think every business should do um, 
and not just baselining, but just practices. And again, in future webinars, we're going to dig into each of these sections, energy, water, waste, a lot further. But I wanted to give you a taste a little bit about what we're going to talk about in these future sessions. So, um, you know, every business should uh, take energy efficiency steps like using LED lighting. I also wanted to mention if you have high ceilings and have to get um, a piece of machinery to get up in a bucket and go up to a large ceiling, LED lights are a great solution because you don't have to replace them as often. So you don't have the safety uh, risk and expense of changing those lights that are high up in say like a auditorium or a gym or whatnot. Um, it's a really great, uh, LEDs are really great, not only cost saving opportunity, but um, also increase that safety um, and reduce risk for your business too. Programmable thermostats. I see so many companies that do not have a turn down schedule at the end of the day. Even just shutting your or turning your thermostat down a couple degrees at the end of the day, having it kick back on a couple hours before you come into the business, that can save you energy and money. Um, I've looked at a lot of heat maps of businesses and their energy use, and usually anywhere from when the business closes till it opens again, there's a lot of opportunity to save energy. So turn down your building uh, heating or cooling during off peak hours. Uh, or turn it up in the summer. <laughs> you know, performing regular maintenance on your HVAC system um, can help make your equipment run more efficiently and effectively, and also help save you the cost of replacing um, parts or breakdowns or shutdowns. We would hate to have something shut down in weather like today, um, but doing your regular HVAC maintenance in your building is gonna help you um, really make sure that you're efficient too, and using that equipment efficiently. Occupancy sensors. If you can add occupancy sensors and sensors, sensors in different buildings, um, that would be great because I see so often, and I was so excited to say this, but I see so often businesses that have a closet light on or a room that maybe someone comes in every once in a while that they leave the light on. Occupancy sensors can save anywhere from three to five percent on your energy bills just from installing them in a room. So that's a great opportunity. Or if you have if you're in a restaurant, like putting a shut shutdown policy at the end of the day or your office building, like put a checklist together. What things need to be turned off or unplugged at the end of the day? Hood fans, oh my gosh, in restaurants, they, they definitely need to be turned off at the end of the day or at the end of meal service. Or um, different sorts of equipment like fryers or pasta makers. So, you know, those are some good practices to increase uh, energy efficiency and reduce energy costs that you're build building. And again, in our next session, we'll go into some more of those key strategies. Some others, uh, I was talking about water use. Um, faucet aerators in your bathroom. This is a really easy one to do. Usually you have a little bit of little screen underneath the faucet um, and that's called the aerator. And so changing that aerator out, usually they're about two gallons per minute um, on a standard faucet, sometimes 1.5, but usually two. Um, changing that out to a low flow aerator, and it's really easy to do on most um, faucets, to um, a low flow aerator is going to help save you water costs and those energy costs from hot water. I would not recommend faucet aerators though on sinks like kitchen sinks or um, areas where you need to fill big pots or things quickly because that's going to basically you're reducing with an aerator, you're reducing the amount of flow uh, and restricting the amount of flow, whereas you don't want to do that. It's going to take 10 times longer to fill something. So restrooms only, but a great savings opportunity with those aerators. Um, make sure your bins are recycling bins are properly labeled and have good signage. And this is something you can test. You know, you can put a sign out, give it a couple weeks, take a look at your waste bin and see uh, how much is being diverted? You can ask your staff, is this, does this make sense or is it confusing? If it is, well, you can change it. But um, making sure that you have your bins labeled will help increase diversion and reduce the amount of stuff going to the landfill that should be recycled. So you can iterate and make sure that that uh, signage works. And then also note, remember that you may need to put it in multiple languages for your staff. Um, stocking at least one green certified cleaner. We talked about why that is important. And then, of course, we always want to help our employees get to work more efficiently, sharing information about alternative tram modes of transportation and different options like bike routes, um, bus information. Um, that's always really important to encourage uh, the reduction of that commute footprint for any business. But ultimately, 
every business should start somewhere. So I, you know, I just want to iterate, um, you, you know, don't be afraid to try new strategies. Our, our green business, uh, National Green Business Group, uh, heard from a speaker about, um, uh, you know, making efficient, uh, operationally efficient organizations and kind of pivoting over time. And the main key driver that the thing that he said is do little experiments to see what works and go from there. So like I was saying with the recycling signage, test out a sign that you've created or that you've gotten from maybe us or another organization. Ask your employees if it works. If it doesn't, make changes. And that's that little iteration with one uh, aspect of sustainability, one thing in your business that can increase or reduce resource use is going to um, compile over time. So try something, start somewhere, and remember, it's a journey, not a race. Um, it can be overwhelming to think about all of the different things that you could do in a building or a business to be more efficient. Um, just start somewhere, choose a direction, and, and we can help you choose that direction too, but just start with something. And again, align it with your values, your mission, and think about what, um, where it can most benefit your business and start there. So, um, you know, the one thing too is that you know our program can help. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our program. In our last webinar of this series, I'll dig in really deep into our program and what we do, but I wanted to give you a taste of how we could help. So um, we really, through our programs, we provide an actionable framework to help improve and verify your sustainability practices. And the key is that we provide technical assistance to help um, you get, you know, not only uncover how, um, what opportunities you have in your business, but actually help connect you to resources and help get that done. Um, we also help you, can help you promote your um, practices, not only to your consumers or your customers, but the greater community as well. But ultimately, we help you make progress on your timeline. So one of our programs, our core program is our certification program. Um, so we, in our certification program, we actually look at these uh, the six categories of impact and help you assess your performance. Um, we build an implementation action plan with you and then help you get certified um, in, that, in those different measures. So it's a really credible way to not only make progress on your um, environmental sustainability goals, but also um, help you uh, get gain that recognition and that market differentiation. Uh, we use a great tool that other um, eight or nine other states across the country use to manage their programs, but it's a powerful tool that helps you actually uh, get involved in the certification process. There's a lot of green tips and resources, and you can track your environmental impact along the way. So you get a, a green report card as you complete certification about your annual impact and reductions, environmental reductions over time. So it's a really great opportunity um, to not only save money by wasting less, but really build that comprehensive sustainability plan and then be able to credibly market your and promote your business as a sustainable business. And of course, uh, using us as a resource to help you find all those tools and funding and connecting you to Ameren, Illinois, to get that um, all of those opportunities for your business. We also have a new initiative, and I was talking about this um, footprint. We can actually, um, we're doing green business baselines for, for businesses too. So we can actually work with you to do get your baseline and give a report, a climate impact report um, on your baseline, providing customized recommendations and resources and getting you some recognition for getting your journey, your sustainability journey started. So we talked a lot today <laughs> and I'm really excited for your questions and discussions. If you're interested in applying, you can start the certification process. You can email me. I will put this all in the chat. I will also put my email in the chat but I really wanna open it up to questions now and see what burning questions you have um, uh, uh, from our, my presentation. So thank you so much for being here. I hope this gives you a taste of kind of what's out there on the market right now, what consumers are looking for um, around sustainability in business and, and some easy ways that you can get started. Again, in upcoming sessions, uh, we will dig into all of this a lot more in depth, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a taste about what we're going to be talking about in the rest of this series and also help you uh, think about how you can start your sustainability journey. Thank you.
So what questions do we have? Let's see, I can stop share. Please unmute if you have a question or have a comment. Uh, and uh, we can we can talk from there. I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see everybody. Yes, thank you, Cassie. That was awesome. Very um, good overview of, of the things we're gonna be talking about um, in the next presentations and really digging deeper into, I, I, I'm looking forward to you know learning more about, because I was doing this, uh, trying to do this at SIU um, with departments and you know working with students and stuff like that. And it's, it's really a challenge um, to get people around, you know, getting sustainable and making that mission statement. I think what you said is, is really important. I never really thought of that, like adding that to your mission statement or, or you know, um, complementing your mission statement with a green mission statement. Um, yeah, we had a we had a company that is uh, Masumi USA. They're a um, they do parts distribution from Japan, and they have an office in the Chicagoland area. They actually put it as one of their value statements, and they actually track performance on all of their value statements. So it was a way to align their goals um, with sustainability and make it something that won't go away over time. It's not, you know, if somebody else leaves or a transition happens, it is baked into the core of the organization for them. So it, and they report progress on that um, regularly. So it's, it's a great way to really make sure that sustainability initiatives can, can last for the long haul, so to speak, in businesses and don't just, aren't just peri a period in time and aren't just momentary. It's something that is sustainable and durable um, over the course of the business's lifetime. Thank you. And yeah. I, I had posted a question. Oh, sorry, Larry, you want to go? Well, I was going to mention that, um, you know, I work with primarily very large businesses in Southern Illinois. And the most of my customers that that have a you know a corporate mandate uh, for sustainability sadly they're they're multinational you know and I, I wish you know more of just the u.s based ones would would emphasize this and and perhaps many are but but uh, really though you know like i say and, and a lot of it's the auto industry um they 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 really seem to be on the uh, on the on the the leading edge of that, um, but yeah, I mean it's nice to know that that there are companies out there that that are putting this right up front, and and their individual uh, facilities are being graded on, uh, you know, how aggressive and 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 progressive they are with uh, with implementing all aspects of sustainability. Definitely, and it's kind of neat to see too. I'll highlight and um, I didn't I should have put this in our slide deck for today. Um, but the, our tool that we use for our program, um, like I said, nine other states use that. And there are about 14,000 businesses across um, those nine states working on certification. And the impact numbers are incredible. So all of these little companies, and most of them are micro businesses in the grand scale, meaning very small, you know, 20 to 10 to 20 employees or less, um, they are making significant impacts. And the energy savings um, from those 14,000 companies is like 5 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. It's, in, it's incredible. So in our next webinar, I'll actually highlight some of those metrics and show just the power that small businesses can have. I mean, it's great, you know, and the, you said the automotive industry, that's coming from a lot of the EPA P2 opportunities, pollution prevention opportunities, which is great. But all of these small businesses have, have such an incredible opportunity to make a big collective impact. And that's what is really also exciting too, you know? Big corporations are doing, you know, making big, big changes, but small businesses collectively can make a huge impact too. So, or not to put you on the spot, but you're making efforts towards, you know, your B Corp and you're, you're putting that message out. And so what's been your experience so far? Well, we're just doing it because it's a company mandate, not because it'll help our business. Because, I don't know. I mean, the majority of people who do energy efficiency don't do it because it's sustainable. They do it because it's safe fun. Yep. There's a lot of different motivators. 
That's a great point. <clears throat> Hey, Dale. Yeah. I, I might indicate because since uh, many uh, organizations consider churches as businesses, and we do too, because we're actually uh, pay our utilities through that process or being a business. I, I think it's probably a combination of both. We started out by by making a commitment to, to go green, which, which we did. And so we've done a lot of different things uh, over the last four or five years to to make us do this. And I think it, the thing that really helped a lot was having an audit done of our of our utilities. And I, I would recommend any, whether it's being done by a group like Faith in Place or Amron or, or any of the others, I think that's a good way to start because you will be surprised what you're using that's taking up a lot of energy. If you don't think it is, and it could be things like dishwashers. If you have a dishwasher in your facility, it could be, it could be, you know, the lights is what we think about and LED lights, but there's a lot of other energy uses that you don't, uh, that you really don't think about when, until you have an audit done by, by a person that really will get, go into detail of, of what you're actually doing. So, uh, but, you know, then it became, uh, you know, probably more realized we were saving money by doing this. And mm -hmm. so that's been a, that's been a big benefit from the standpoint of a, of a, of a church type of business. So. That's great, Dale. Thanks for providing that, uh, that story. And you're right. There's so many other things other than LED lights. And I'm excited to dig into that on uh, next Thursday, but uh, really even like, like I said, scheduling your HVAC systems, uh, you know, your thermostats, um, you know, different sorts of commissioning to make sure your HVAC is working properly. Um, you know, dishwashers for sure, that saves energy and money and water. So I love that example, Dale, of thinking about ways that, um, you know, getting that assessment and that reinforcement of the importance of understanding your use. Um, and in Illinois, energy is a driver um, for, uh, and a great place to start for businesses because, you know, another thing I didn't talk about was just getting early wins. Um, energy efficiency related opportunities are some great early wins to not only have some visibility of sustainable actions in, in your business or building, but it generates the cost savings to do things like investigating your purchasing or doing some of the things that um, like green cleaners. So things, and plus there are great incentives too available. So um, energy efficiency is a great place to start for organizations who are looking to start their sustainability journey. And, and Cassie, you know, um, that, that's a good point. And, and a lot of times with the energy efficiency projects, um, where we're, you know, we're trying to work with, with customers to get them to do that and, and the bean counters, not to throw them under the bus, but they're only looking at payback periods and they're not looking at the other, the other aspects. Right. you know, uh, potentially, you know, improve worker safety and, and uh, quality of life for the worker and, and reduce spoilage and things like that. There, there's so many, so many other aspects uh, to it. And to your point about, you know, the water savings and, you know, uh, setbacks on your HVAC systems and, and lighting controls, and everything. I used to, I won't mention the name of the company. It's a recreational beverage company based in St. Louis. But we had a, a quality improvement uh, program that was very successful. And one of the keys was constancy of purpose. It was driven down to the individual employee. And unfortunately, so many businesses, the individual employee is like, well, I don't see the electric bill or I don't see the water bill. So, um, and, and I had an instance where I was doing a walkthrough with a facilities director at, at a, a large educational facility. And he unlocked the door to a supply cabinet. And as he was unlocking it, he goes, you watch the light, the light is on in this room. And this was like two o'clock in the afternoon. He said, the guy came, he unlocked this door. He turned on the light. He got one thing out of this supply closet. He locked the door and walked away. He goes, so this light's been burning for like six and a half hours for no reason. So just, you know, People don't think occupancy sensors or, or setbacks or anything make a difference. They make a tremendous difference. And uh, 
So, I mean, even if you could just get started there. And again, that, that's back to the same thing. That guy, he's not thinking about the electric bill. Hey, I don't have to pay the electric bill. I don't know what it is. It's not like electricity is free or water is free or gas is free, but the people need to understand that. And it needs to be at the at the individual level and there needs to be, a, you know, again, constancy of purpose that this is something that we want to do in our business, continuous improvement in, in that direction. Exactly. I'll, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> I love your soapbox. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Amy, were you going to say something? Sorry. Yeah. So one question I always have about everything like this is, <clears throat> I mean, I hear a lot that, you know, small organizations and, you know, small businesses are just overwhelmed and they, you know, they don't have time and they don't have the resources. They don't have the people to put on this. They, they don't even have time to come to this meeting and, and learn all this great stuff. And so it's like, how do we get this word out faster? I know we're, we're doing that now. We're trying, but whoever has ideas, <laughs> please. Let me know. Yeah, I, you know, and we get that so often, um, you know, so we're so thankful that you are all here today learning about this and, and hanging with us for this journey over the, the next month. But, you know, for organizations that don't have access to this resource, we do a lot of direct outreach to organizations. Um, so we partner with, we like to partner with organizations like Amy's or um, business associations or chambers or um, Sonia's group that's working with cooperative businesses. Um, hi, Sonia. Sonia and I actually worked together when um, we were in college and just starting all of this work with green business. So, so great to see you again. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so yeah, we work with organizations like Sonia's to um, get the word out because they are the people that have the, the members that are, that are the, the audience of businesses that listen to them, that have their ear. So, you know, us as an organization, sometimes we don't, um, we don't directly reach out to those organizations. We work with people like um, the cooperatives and the chambers um, to get the word out. And that's probably the best way. Um, we is working with local partners to help get the word out and spread the word. So please, all of you on the webinar today, um, help be champions and spread the word in, in your communities too about resources that are available and, and ways that, that we can help. And that's what, you know, we talk about that so often on the national side too with programs across the country. And, and really it takes the community-based partners to be healthy champions in driving this message. Okay, great. So at least we're <clears throat> on the right path. <laughs> we are, we are. And then, like I said, starting small and starting with a focus. So I usually like to talk to a business and say, well, what are you, what are you concerned about in your organization? And sometimes they say waste. I'm like, I think we could recycle more or like, man, my energy bills are really high. Like if there's anything that we can do to reduce that, like I would really appreciate it. Um, and we focus there. So we can talk about the whole enchilada. Um, but like I said, it's really setting a focus of where to begin um, and what are the things that we can do to make progress together that help it be successful. And that helps with the inundation of feeling like you're overwhelmed, like you can't do a lot. And that's where we try to meet businesses where they're at um, and try to help them along their timeline and journey. So, you know, we all wish, I think, that we could do more and move faster, um, but we also have to be understanding that these businesses are running their business and we can work with them, though, incrementally over time to make real change and impact. Excellent. Anyone else questions? Hey, Anthony. Hey, I, I just wanted to add to what you were saying, um, just about celebrating the wins and uh, winning the win, I think is a phrase I've heard recently, uh, and spreading those stories around to help recruit businesses and let them know that um, it's it's about helping your business. And it also helps the environment, but I think that's how we can shepherd in more businesses to the cause. Hey, hey you, have your, you have your hand raised for, for all? Is that correct? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no worries. It's Farrell. Hi. Oh, uh, hi. I met most of the people on the call, but I've had the pleasure of some interactions with a few of y'all. And um, 
I wanted to ask about kind of the customer side of things. And one of the things that uh, have come up in my conversations with Amy has been this local business network that she's developing, um, you know, where there will be a rewards kind of system with, where customers that spend money at one of the businesses in the network will kind of get rewards points that they can spread around and where they can also get rewards points for doing things like an energy audit in their home and stuff like that. So my question is kind of like how that ties in towards encouraging more businesses to go green and how it can be kind of nurtured as while you're in this process, not only are we saying abstractly that there's a larger customer pool out there for you, but here it is and here it is <laughs> on it. Yeah, definitely. So um, as I as I mentioned today, customers, well, every business cares about their customers. If they didn't have customers, they wouldn't be in business, you know? So that's the, that's the big, big driver is just um, listening to your customers, listening to the people that um, frequent your business, that love your business, and that are going to continue to support it. And that, that's the cool thing is that if we can help businesses as our organization and program better communicate the strategies that they're doing, they're going to open it up to that bigger customer base that cares about sustainability. So we're, we're still collaborating with Amy on how we tie our work in with the business to that network of consumers. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity for, um, for business or for consumers to really understand our customers, um, to be able to go and support that business, learn a little bit more about what they do. It just builds that stronger connection and tie. So we're really excited to see um, and, and explore opportunities that we can connect and work with individual businesses to make that connection to what Amy's trying to do with reward points and, and different things uh, to, to promote and say, hey, these leading businesses in the region are doing the things that we should all be doing in our homes. Uh, here's what they're saving. So telling that case study, telling that story is going to help drive the consumer or the customer to say, or the community member to say, hey, I want to support that business. They're doing some great stuff. And I also learned a lot from them. So it creates this feedback loop. So really the marketing and communication piece of what we do with businesses and what businesses can do um, really helps build um, that connectivity. Rachel, you had a question? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Just more of a comment on what you and Farrell are both talking about. Um, I'm a co-owner of a restaurant and we have a lot of practices that we do, um, sustainable practices, but we've always had kind of a hard time marketing them. And then also we've noticed that when we try to promote that we're buying things locally or try to talk about the different sustainable practices that we do use, not as many consumers, just people in the community seem to care about it as much as obviously we all would like to see. And I just um, think that that loop you're talking about where businesses are being educated and then staff's being educated and customers are being educated and then the business, I think that sort of educational factor in the community is such a big part of this and actually motivates me to try to promote what we're doing more, not just in order to get more customers to um, want to come because we do that, but just in terms of like having that conversation happening just even more in the community. So Definitely. I just thought that was a really important point that you both brought up. That's, Deb, thank you for that comment. That is to to totally crucial is, you know, the why. Why should I care? Why does it matter? <laughs> you know, and what Amy's doing can really help build that um, knowledge and awareness of it too. You know, we also work um, with businesses to think about what, you know, what are some things that you can promote and then give the message of why, why should I care? You know, so I think um, working from both angles in that feedback loop is so important. So thank you for that comment. And Amy, your work continues to be important in driving this message in the region and community of, of why should I care? Thank you. Thank you, Cassie and Tony for, for doing this for us. And thank you everyone, everyone today for, for participating. And um, 
stay safe out there today. Hopefully stay home and do not lose your electricity if you have any say in that. And, <laughs> um, yep. and so guess. really quickly, our next event is going to be increasing profit margins by reducing energy and water use. And I'm excited to share that Larry um, Irwin from the Amarin, Illinois Energy Efficiency Program will also be joining us next week. So tune in, exciting things to come. Sorry, Amy, go ahead. <laughs> nope. That's it. That's all I had. So um, just wanted to thank everybody again, and hopefully we will see you next week. And until then, take care. Stay energized, Red Or. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye.